Ricardo. Hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome. So we're so excited. We're doing our live. I have my guest, beautiful guest, uh, Sarah. She um, is here with me. So a little bit about Sarah. Yes. Do you want to go ahead? Sure, sure. Hey, guys. Sarah Safa here from Refined Aesthetics. I'm so delighted to be here with Miss Yalda, the queen. Um, so, yeah, so I've actually been injecting for a little over 16 years. I do a lot of national education on injectables and advanced aesthetic techniques. And I am hoping, with Yalda's assistance today, to help share a few pearls with you guys, perhaps, or just have a lighthearted conversation. Exactly. So, just a little bit story um, about how Sarah and I, we met. So, three years ago, when I decided to become a nurse injector, um, I was so excited. I didn't know what I'm doing exactly. And I was just um, having a training and I was just, all I knew was like, okay, I'm going to learn how to use Botox. And I, at that point I was working with a facial cosmetic surgeon, Dr. Hamra, mm -hmm. and this beautiful lady walks into the office. So one of the first trainers that I had and I was so honored to learn from was this beautiful queen right here. So I'm She's sweet. so She's being very nice. No. no, I mean she paid me to be nice, <laughs> like almost a hundred dollars. So not too expensive. I was able to afford. Thank you for that. I love it. Well, yeah. and Yada obviously had a very natural talent. Was as an educator for a very very long time. I can say is a, a beautiful thing to run across someone who literally has a beautifully aesthetic eye, which is not something that we can all train. So. So thank you for having me today, girl. Oh my God, we're so <laughs> excited. So we're just gonna cover a few things. Um, our topics will be one. Um, yep. Will be the a little bit, just a little bit of the social media, social yep, media, and the impact that it's kind of having on our aesthetic market now for all of us injectors out there and for our consumers. And second, um, especially mm -hmm. younger generation, when it comes to mm -hmm. obsession with Kardashian, when it comes with obsession with. Um, comparing themselves to others um, and not seeing their own beauty and constantly comparing themselves to others. And definitely our second topic will be talking about filters, you guys. So filters, 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 and kind of the impact that it's having on our patients and also having on our Self. colleagues and, and self for sure. <laughs> like one thing I was yeah. just thinking is like we as an injector, we have access to all the Botox, all mm -hmm. the fillers, mm -hmm. And you will never like be able to achieve what you just see on pictures or on Instagram because it's all yes filters. It's very difficult. I mean, when you think about it, it's really about the the physical attributes or the physical improvements that we're trying to create in our offices day to day versus this virtual reality that we're competing against. I mean, I don't know about you, but day to day, I feel like there's so many patients that come through the door and literally I'm asking to see their picture. This happened to me today, by the way, you guys. Yeah. Oh, okay. She, she's not yeah. watching. Sorry. She's a great patient. <laughs> but we laughed about it. So it's all good. But she came to me and literally, you know, showed me a picture of herself and how she wanted to look. And she's beautiful. She's drop dead gorgeous I'm naturally, sure. right? But she showed me that picture of herself that had been face tuned, and she was showing me like what she liked about it. And I'm thinking, but this yeah, isn't even your is natural, natural beauty, like. So, so here we are, right? We're dealing with this debacle day in and day out. So, how do you? I mean, how do you approach this patients when they're showing you this face tuned picture? You're challenged with how so to. So I them. really think as a, as a. As a 20, as a 20, okay, no, 20. I'm not 20. I'm 22, by the way. Just kidding, I'm really 40. <laughs> I love it. Since I'm 20. Okay, Joe, uh, You kidding. look 20, by the way. But oh, my question. <laughs> Sorry, guys. So as a 37-year-old, of course, again, I look at the mirror and I see all this, like, things that could be different. But then at the end of the day, I feel like at the end, you need to love yourself. I, you need to love what you look like. Yes, we can give you that beautiful crispy lips. We can give you that beautiful jawline. But at the same time, it comes to expectations. Um, it is amazing that we have all this access to social media. We have access, we can educate ourselves. But then some of this um, material that we see on social media, they're not even realistic. Me and Sarah, we were just talking about um, non-surgical rhinoplasty when it comes to thread lift. Right, right. And sometimes even just the, the ramifications of some of the procedures that we do because our patients are, are really driving us in that direction because they've, they've seen it. You know, how many of us 
have been on Instagram late at night, maybe two glasses of wine in, and you see something and you literally find yourself even as a professional saying, ooh, can I do that? Or can, can, I, I, do can that? I afford that? Is that something that I want to do? And so we do find ourselves um, trying to find a healthy balance where we need to really concentrate on the, the overall health, right? First, do good to our patients. For sure. Do good, good things will come. And taking risks sometimes based on things you're seeing on Instagram, although sometimes we feel pressured by our patients, is not always the best idea. And as consumers and patients out there, you know, please hear us when we tell you, like we want to be honest and we love you guys and we want the best results possible, but we don't want to take risk. And I think what y'all is referring to is, um, you know, threads being a major hot topic. I mean, they really are. And we see it day All in and day, day out. Day, Some of yeah. our best colleagues are really doing beautiful jobs with the threads. But you have to remember, you know, threads are a suture type material and to put them in delicate places such as the nose, the nose for nasal yeah. tip elevation, it's really delicate that is, cartilage. That is a delicate cartilage. Yeah, so, and you know, it's just, it's, it's a... It's a debate, it, you know, whether or not we should be doing it, but we also have to think long-term results with our patients, For sure. right, no, when definitely. choosing these products. I think the goal is to maintain your youth. The goal is to prevent aging. The mm -hmm. goal is prevention. Yes. I think at this, uh, our new generation topic. is tr truly uh, prevention. It, yes, yes. So we were talking earlier about millennials, but I think what a lot of us realize too is that Generation Z, you guys, Generation Z is hot on their tail, Absolutely. hard on their tracks, Absolutely. and they're sitting in front of me right now over there. Hi, guys. Hello. <laughs> and, you know, it's our 24, 20, almost 25-year-olds and younger, and they are the IG commodity. commodity they are the yeah. ones, the consumers who are really, truly, this is their way of life. It really is, and our millennials, obviously, as well. And the reality is, you know, starting early, we all know, yeah, that can be preventative. For sure. Therapeutic skin care, light dosage of Botox, maybe a little bit of hyaluronic acid for facial filler. But long term, you know, we just want to make sure we maintain those good relationships with them and don't let them get so lost on social media and Instagram that they lose that connection with us as their providers. Totally. Right? So what do you think about a 21-year-old coming to you asking for Botox? How do you address that? I actually never look at age. Thank you. Thank I you. never look at so, age. I actually purposely avoid their age on their intake forms. That's so important because yeah. when it comes to facial anatomy, when it comes to your genetic, I believe mm -hmm. it has nothing mm -hmm. to do with your age because right. everyone's skin is different. Everyone ages differently. And, you know, beside the internal factor, external mm -hmm. factor, stress, mm -hmm. um, cortisol, like um, hormonal changes, there's so many aspects that it can affect your body. So definitely, again, like I think one thing that we're trying to mm -hmm. focus on prevention, I think when it comes to surgery, um, you know, I respect that when there's a need for it, mm -hmm. of course, patient, of course. patient mm -hmm. definitely could benefit from a facelift, from a neck lift, but I think what we're trying to achieve is um, having our patient to prevent um, mm -hmm. aging, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. therefore they can a little bit delay that facelift right. at the end, right? right? And respect the process. You know, we all know, again, like we're saying, long-term effects and to respect the natural processes that we go through as we're guiding them along this journey in the Absolutely. aesthetic industry. Um, I had, a, again, another beautiful patient today who's been with me for years, and she was finally at that point that a, a facelift was going to be her best option. I felt, as a provider, you know, I like to serve people. I don't like to sell them. I know you're the same way, yeah, right? Totally so not. serve them, not sell. For sure. And for me to uh, apply additional syringes of filler would have been still not as gratifying as if she was going to receive a good facelift at this point in time. So I had to be honest with her and move her along in her journey, you for know? Sure. So honesty is the best policy, for sure. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> so one thing exciting we forgot to mention, guys. So we're having two exciting giveaway. Yeah. So one is going to be a syringe of um, filler for mm -hmm. lips, mm -hmm. and the second will be jawline. Jawline. Yeah. <laughs> so um, the way we're going to do that, we're going to have our patient just ask um, a lot of great questions. We're mm -hmm. here to answer you guys' question and also to um, educate you guys. So feel free to ask as many questions as you want. And Sarah and I were here to answer you guys' question. Yes, honesty definitely is hundred percent. Yes. Unfortunately, yes. we see <laughs> providers that they really their goal is not helping people. Their goal is could be taking advantage. Yeah, and that's yeah. yeah. And one thing I love yeah. about Sarah and I respect her <laughs> is just like her honesty. So 
Um, can you tell my husband that, by the way? I'm oh. kidding. Yeah, totally. <laughs> so one thing fun I learned about Sarah today is like she's oh, yep. married to Iranian. Yes, I am. Yeah. So we have a nice connection. <laughs> so Jamie, do you want to go ahead and um, ask, so what are the different type of fillers? Would you like to go ahead and cover that question? Oh yeah, that's a great question. So, well, 16 years of doing this, we've seen an evolution of fillers in general. So as we're talking about fillers, we're thinking about natural products, or we're thinking about what we call biostimulatory type products, mm -hmm. right? So we have those products that are going to go in um, via injection, and they're literally going to help stimulate collagen development over the course of as long as they're in the tissue itself. The other fillers that we a lot of times like to use, which I, I really am a huge advocate of, are our reversible fillers, which are hyaluronic acid. Um, they are as close to our natural hyaluronic acid as we can possibly get in our tissue. That's true, yeah. But we have to think of ourselves, I love saying this, as functional injectors. We no longer, you guys, are just chasing fine lines and wrinkles, but this day and age, as aesthetic experts, especially this girl, watch her, <laughs> yeah, um, you're going to really achieve a beautiful natural outcome by using these fillers to a more functional capacity where we're using the various anatomy to really elevate facial features and soften and create harmony and balance than to just overfill someone in their lower face and make them look boxy, right? So there's a whole science behind it, you guys, and we could, could be a whole other discussion. All right, so Sarah, here comes the next question. Mm -hmm. What is the best type of filler to use on their eyes? So let's cover oh, that a little bit. Eyes. On their eyes. Ooh, one of the girl. tricky, mm -hmm. absolutely. It's very so tricky. do you straight go to under the eye or do you, like, tell me more. Such a great question. Okay, so, and I know it's all over IG, you guys. We're seeing an <laughs> under eye filler nonstop. But what you're not seeing is things that can happen, right, if not being with a skilled injector, such as uh, delayed swelling from lymphatic drainage or basically seeing a little bit of like a festooning or a little bit of a blue tindal effect if placed too superficially. So again, anatomy is key. So go to a skilled injector. I'm going to preface this conversation by saying that. But to choose products wisely, products that are very forgiving in the under eye area or knowing as an injector how to handle products that can possibly be even gently blended down to, to give those products the the water that they naturally want or a bacterial static type effect is going to be the best way to really blend the under eye area and to never let anyone overcorrect you. Wouldn't you agree? I do agree Over 100%. Correction? Yeah. It's like yes. poking, poking a bear in the den. <laughs> Don't do it. Oh my God, Modest I'm going to use that next study. time. <laughs> um, so here's the question that someone is asking is like, do you think that fillers could migrate? Yes. Great yes. question. In my humble opinion, mm -hmm. yes, that's a possibility. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. you have to respect the anatomy. You have to respect the tissue. So, mm -hmm. for instance, if you're correct, if you're doing lip filler, yes. if you're injecting too fast, if you're injecting a lot of product at once, mm -hmm. there is a possibility of migration. So that can happen. Um, what are your thoughts on that? I think that, um, and it's not even always an immediate issue, you guys. I mean, respecting the tissue plane, you know, again, having a very skilled injector, using appropriate product selection. That's um, the key. Those are all key. But as we've seen on Instagram, um, time and time again, and social media in general, there are patients with over time of having product filled in, in certain areas over time. And I, this has happened to me personally. I will share that story yeah. where, you know, 16 years of getting things done since the age of 24, 25. Uh, by the way, she's 26 right now. I so love you. Yeah, and no, I paid her a hundred dollars for that one. Was that um, 120? <laughs> I thought it was $120. It's $500. So, oh. so, so you will see some migration even over time as that product settles, that's, that's right? True. So, you know, that happens. And so there's nothing wrong with reversing an area that needs to be delicately released so that you can get in there and do an adequate job later. That was another awesome patient of mine today who had had filler in the past and migration in the upper lip area into, yeah, the white roll and the, you know, the muscle. And, and it, I think that's what yeah. makes the, um, the patient that they kind of like, you know how they come to the office, they're like, mm -hmm. I don't want to look like a duck. Correct. And that's exactly what it looks like. Yes. When you have a filler migration yes. to the white roll, that's what gives you that look Mm -hmm. The monkey lip. The monkey. We oh call my it God. the monkey lip. Oh wow. No bueno, you guys. No, no, Not no, a no. good look. <laughs> Have you seen that in Farsi? The mon oh, I don't know. You tell what? me. <laughs> the monkey lip. We're gonna we're gonna coin that in Farsi. My, we're gonna ask yeah, Puya, her yeah, husband. my hubby. Um, yeah. Thankfully, he never told me I had the monkey lip, or we'd be over by now. But. <laughs> but that's a, it's a really easy fix, you guys, and um, no one can ever be too humbled. And I recently, I'll give credit to uh, to Wasim out there because he actually Wasim, Wasim yes. Wasim. So he 
reversed mine and then did a little bit of a product lay to do a little aversion on the upper lip and you know it was no one's fault it's just over the years that it migrated gently and so don't be ashamed you guys if something's not right go back to your injector Absolutely. they've got the tools to reverse it and if they're not willing then maybe it's time to find a new injector who's willing to make things right for sure I at the end mm -hmm. I always tell my patient we're here at your service we're here to help you we're here to educate you and I think we mm -hmm. truly care about our patients like again um, I'm so excited to have this beautiful <laughs> lady here next to me um, and the reason I asked her to join me is because again she's the lady who trained me the first time um, she her experience is phenomenal and I have her great things about her um, and again I'm very honored to You're have so her here so one of it. the questions they're asking is uh, um, what is the best way to find out the best treatment for oh for me okay that's for me it's a oh yeah, for I me, love it I love it all right what are your thoughts on Kybella Oh, you guys, Kybella, Kybella, Kybella. So I did have the, the benefit of actually being a trainer for Kybella before it really got relaunched. And so, and to get to know some of the individuals who actually studied the product itself, we have come such a far way. Sure. Um, we've learned a lot and we learned that with fillers and you know, most products that we have injectably related are actually coming from other countries prior to us even getting them. So we have that luxury of learning from our European and Canadian counterparts. Kybella itself, deoxycholic acid, acid, is a American product, right? Not that there are other fat killers out there. But the reality is Kybella has turned into this beautiful contouring tool. Isn't that something? It's Did amazing. You, have you had it? Oh, girl. Like, have I had what? it? I'm not going to tell you how much I put. At what you point in my health regimen, right, I should a little shot of Kybella. No, I'm kidding. No, you would need a Costco no. vat to treat this body with Kybella, <laughs> but it's okay. Kybella's great, right? Because now we have this amazing tool where not only do we first, you know, we talked earlier about under eyes. I didn't really answer the question. I apologize, but we, we lift the cheeks first, right, before okay. doing under eye filler. But now, after we lift the cheeks, when we see a bit of um, tissue elevation tissue in the elevation. jawline and perhaps augmentation, and we saw that tiny little buckle pad that's irritating us, with good right sweet there. water, some, that, some, yeah. we can go in and literally deposit the like, smallest amount of Kybella and debulk that plane and make it look beautiful. What I always tell my patients is like, let's <laughs> baptize you with some Kybella. Kybella, I love it. I'm going to yeah. start baptizing more patients. Absolutely. It's, it's one of my <laughs> absolutely favorite treatments. Yes, it does come with some uh, recovery. It comes yes. with some inflammation, mm -hmm. numbness. Mm -hmm. um, but I love it. I do recommend to my patient. I mean, it makes sense if, um, you know, for certain patients, definitely they do need that mm -hmm. neck lift. They do need that liposuction. But if you're still young, the tissue is healthy. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. It's a great um, tool. So what other questions um, audience are asking? Because I'm not like catching up with all the questions. Can you so read the So I questions? have a question about Cabela yeah. working under the chin. And I think that what I found interesting is that when you're dealing with various uh, fat pads in your face and your body, they're all a little bit different, you guys. So you have to remember that a dense fat, perhaps, underneath this chin area is going to be a little bit more resilient. Therefore, you're probably going to need a little more oomph with that Kybella, a little more CCs, perhaps a few more treatments to Absolutely. really debulk this. But when you're dealing with, for lack of a better term, squishy fat, <laughs> like fat around this free jaw region, um, cautiously, you're going to see a little bit more of an uptake with that Kybella and a little better debulking. So the question was, can you use it under your chin? It absolutely, absolutely. It was FDA approved for that. But we also like to use it other areas. Too. So usually Off how many sessions do you tell your patients they probably need? For the chin area? For the chin so supplemental? So we honestly usually start off with what we call a kit from Allergan, which is actually about the, the four vials. You're getting about eight cc's total. And that makes a really good impact. I don't necessarily inject it all at once, obviously. But I know that it's going to take at least a good eight cc's or more to truly make a big impact on this chin area. But you do get a nice retraction, tissue retraction with it um, over time. So, you know, it works well. Um, what are the patients that you would say no to them when they come to your office? Such a great they, idea. Yeah. I they love wanna... that this is like the Cabela show. Okay. I've been waiting forever to explain Actually, Kybella. they also pay us to talk yeah. about Cabela, so this is why we're... Sponsorship by Cabela. No, we're totally kidding. There's no sponsorship here. Except for the champagne, which is wonderful, by the way. Um, oh, no, it's about so champagne. <laughs> I forgot we even have the champagne. So, Cabela. Um, yes. So, I, what was the question? I totally got distracted um, Who is not... So, how would you um, define that who's not the right oh, patient yes. for Cabela? Yeah. a lot of patients mm -hmm. you have to say no to them how do you say the no? the first patient would be the unrealistic patient I'm true. kidding the skin type obviously is the biggest indicator so whether or not they have good skin quality um, and to be honest again y'all just like we're the same way we like to practice what we preach and the reality is is that if there is a surgical procedure perhaps that is better for you than Kybella based on the size of that submental fat pad 
we may recommend you or refer you out for a surgical, um, you know, a little liposuction or a little platysmal band plication or something simple under the neck versus getting Kybella because cost-wise it may not make sense for you. That's and true. in the long run, your happiness is what matters to us. So, um, Someone is asking usually what is the recovery for Kybella? Mm, it varies. Yeah. Everyone's different. Right. Yeah. What do you think in your experience with your patients? So usually I always tell my patient, I give them about fully nine weeks. I tell them that it comes with inflammation. You may experience mm -hmm. some numbness, mm -hmm. irritation. Um, of course, every time you do use needle, there's a possibility that you can bruise somebody. And of course, everyone's um, heals differently. But I always tell my patient, give it about eight to nine weeks um, yeah. till the, kind to of that lumps and bumps goes mm -hmm. away, the numbness goes away. Um, but um, I have had it done. I love it very much. And <laughs> I was waiting for the disclosure. Oh I've had it done. No, <laughs> absolutely. Like I mean, yeah. I I feel like sometimes even you do exercise, you um, you lose a lot of weight. This is mm -hmm. like a stubborn fat. It's yes. it's very hard to get yeah. rid of it. So definitely. Um, it's one of my favorite treatments that I do offer in my practice. And we do tell people, guys, if I, I'm going to interject for a second, with a lot of things that we do, including a lot of the, like, the laser technology that we do in our industry, unlike any other realm of medicine, you have to keep in mind that swelling, a lot of times, is your friend. I mean, that's what's it's going to stimulate that, that collagen, that inflammatory cascade process, for which sure. is going to encourage more collagen stimulation. So I know it sounds crazy, but we say embrace the swell. Embrace That's the swell. No, it's a swollen, blessing. It's a good thing. It's a good thing. If I laser your face and you're swollen, yay! That means you're going to stimulate more <laughs> collagen. <laughs> so, Sarah, tell us a little bit more about skincare and when it comes to. Um, all right, I come to the office. Yes. We do some Botox. We do some fillers. Mm -hmm. So, tell me more about the um, your favorite laser treatment out there and oh. patients asking. Yes. Oh, yep. Laser oh. treatments. Let's talk about laser treatments. Laser treatments. Let's do it. Which so, actually can tie into kind of our overall discussion of how do we get that face tune clearness in the skin, right? Like how do we achieve that poreless beauty? Well, first off, you're not getting rid of your pores, ladies. You're going to shrink <laughs> them down. Let's be honest. Unless um, you filter. Right? That's true. Unless you filter. So how do we get the the physical improvements versus what you're seeing with your filters. And um, the first thing, which Don and I were cracking up about, which she jokes on me about because I'm pasty white, um, is the, the BBL, not the Brazilian butt lift, you guys, the broadband light therapy. That's so disappointing. I, I thought we were going to talk about some tushi That's in our episode. <laughs> So we will uh, we'll have to get girls from Moksha um, Aesthetics over here and talk about their sculpture. You know, they've got the whole key on that too. Um, so no, we will talk a little bit about how do we how do we brighten the skin? Like how do how did, how did Lindsay Lohan get rid of all her her freckling and her sun damage? So let's just be honest first, you guys. For all of you out there, if you see spotting on the face when you're young and cute, we call it freckles. But the reality is. It's sun damage, you guys. It's sun damage. Tree pubescent, yeah, we're talking freckles. After that, we're really talking sun damage. And why is that important? That's important because discoloration on the skin contributes to 60% of visual aging on people. So when you uplift that discoloration, that light reflex that we're trying to achieve that you see on all these beauties, these awesome ring lights that thank God Yada has here for us tonight, You're so that sweet. is what we're looking for is that bright reflex. The same way we use fillers, right, to Definitely. optimize you know, volume and, and apexes on the face to create reflex. So the BBL or IPL is a, another variation, right? I'm, a, I'm an IPL kind she's of a girl IPL, and I'm she's a BBL, BBL kind of a So Both are great. Bright yeah. band light, Broad intense, band light, pulse, light. intense pulse, light. pulse light. light therapy. Light therapy, you guys, it's a great way to drive out that unwanted pigmentation, seal off vessels, brighten up the tissue. As far as tightness goes, you've got a, a plethora of, of things out there. You've got the Morpheus 8, you've got profractionated devices that are going to ir irrigate your skin, basically creating little channels to stimulate collagen. You've got your Halo, which is a hybrid. So it really depends on what you're trying to achieve and what you're willing to sacrifice with your downtime Absolutely. and price. That also is a, is a thing. So consult with your provider because I guarantee if you are just injecting right now, that's like making a bed with dirty sheets. You That's, need to be lasering or light therapy or doing therapeutic skincare for your skin. So someone was asking, what is your recommendation for acne scars? Ooh, I prefer fractional people. Yeah. yeah. So what, how do you handle yeah. it if the patient currently have like active acne? Great question. I give them to my esthetician. <laughs> Sorry, did I just say that? Thanks, Patina. That's my decision. Um, yeah, no, I, I, I actually, um, it's tough. It's a tough scenario, and I feel like we're seeing 
more and more women um, going on like spironolactone and other products that are going to help clear up their acne. Accutane, you got to be careful you guys. If you're out there as a patient and you're on Accutane, you're going to have a little more photosensitivity, photosensitivity excuse me, for about six months, so you don't want to go to your provider for laser, but they'll educate you and all that, or at least they should. Yeah. Um, so I would say that with active acne, we first try to get it under control. Um, you might have some great, with your background, you probably have some great recommendations of how you guys do that. I do not like to laser them until they've actually cleared their acne. That's a, that's mm -hmm. really makes degree. sense. You know, if you mm -hmm. do have active acne, you really want to get that under control because mm -hmm. at some point, you know, the goal is to prevent you from having ac um, acne scars. Mm -hmm. So one thing I do in mm -hmm. my practice, do you guys use VI peel? I'm very aware of it, but yes. we personally don't because I do so much laser. I honestly just don't have time. So for any of my patients out there that need the VI peel, go see <laughs> Go see Alda. No, so one thing I do for my mm -hmm. patient, as you said, yes, we really uh, get them the acne under control. And then when the acne kind of stops mm -hmm. and then you just left with the acne scar, um, I do personally use either Morpheus Aid. I do a lot of PRP, mm -hmm. uh, microneedling. Yes. Um, patients were asking, how do you... Um, how do you deal with stretch marks? Oh, that's so that's great. That's such a topic. That's oh, such, I know, right? That person's going to be living in Bora Bora for a time <laughs> that figures out how to handle. So what you have to remember, you guys, and this is, again, us just being brutally honest and years of surgical exper expertise up here. Stretch marks are deep, you guys. They're not as superficial. So for you to see a stretch mark cream to some degree, um, what I would say is don't invest a ton of money in topicals because Thank it you. truly yes. doesn't go deep enough. Uh, things you could do, perfractional, microneedling, you know, Morpheus body is a great one. Um, you've got to get deep. You've got to get down deep to those dermal junctions where those adhesions are still tethering down in order to help stimulate and release. There is a new, um, interestingly enough, cellulitic product coming out, an injectable. And the We're name so completely excited. explodes okay. my mind. <laughs> but it will be out and it's coming very soon. And uh, I'll have to like follow up on Instagram with that name because it's totally losing me right now. But the reality is they're coming out with great things, but they're not there yet. yet. They're not there yet. There's of things course. you can do, but they're not perfect. All right. So next question, um, do you recommend anything for um, non non-surgical butt enhancement? Oh, I love it. There's this thing called booty bump. It's these underwear that you sit. No, I'm totally kidding. <laughs> do you sell that in your office? We That's do not sell that in our office. I love your people. They're funny. Um, gosh, you guys. So oh, I think the best, prettiest outcome I've ever seen surgically, and I did spend a lot of time in the OR, was fat grafting um, to to the buttocks. Not necessarily implants. Implants can look very unnatural. Implants, yeah. Like, I think yeah. as much as you guys can, stay away from um, yeah. butt implants. I think that's just really, like, mm -hmm. I have seen really, really bad me too. Yeah, Me not too. no bueno. Yeah, yeah. no bueno. <laughs> they look extremely... You're trilingual now. This is great. <laughs> yes, we're, we're learning also <laughs> in English here. <laughs> so, yeah. Can we quote that? I'm pretty sure we can't turn like, no bueno. Um, no. Um, the reality is... no bueno. <laughs> the reality is, do your squats, ladies. Do your squats. Do 40 to 50 a night. Just a little nice deep squats. Build up that muscle. Build up what God gave you. And um, if you truly still feel a deficiency after you've done your booty workout, then maybe consider fat grafting with a highly skilled body plastic surgeon. That's very important. All right. So um, some of the patients are asking about back to Kybella. <laughs> this is, I love this. Next time on Yada Speaks is going to be. So a they're problem. asking whether is Kybella permanent. What are your thoughts oh, on that? Oh, that's a great question. That's a great that's question. A great question I, um, yeah. I mean, whoever, whoever asked that question thank you. gets, yeah. Yeah, you, you get a you make, gold star. You make Sarah's <laughs> nice, actually. So deoxycholic acid, you guys, which is what Kybella is, is a, is a natural derivative found in our body. And although we all wish we had more of it, right? We don't. We have limited amounts. But when you inject it directly into that fat cell itself, you are creating a, a lysis or a death of the cell. So, yes, it is a permanent death if you will a, a, a nice death because it's fat we're trying to get rid of it but on the flip side of things to be overly zealous as an injector and overdoing a certain area can also create a little repercussion and you've got to be cautious too to be very careful around vascular areas this is something that dear colleagues of mine across the country we just had a discussion on this literally today that you have to be cautious about intravascular injections with Kybella as well which can act like a detergent almost like sclerotherapy yeah, it can true. shut down blood flow so you've got to be very careful about that as well so um, in the right hands it is permanent and it's a beautiful thing but never go aggressive be patient like you said earlier you've got to wait those you know two months or so to see a, a good result prior to injecting again very true. be 
patient. Be cautious and patient. I, I mm -hmm. always tell my patient, you know, some of this didn't happen overnight. It's not going to go <laughs> right. away overnight, but really, right. when it comes to non-surgical, you know, I, I love my non-surgical mm -hmm. treatments. Mm -hmm. um, we can, you know, give you guys an amazing result as long as you're the right candidate, mm -hmm. but definitely be patient. It takes some time, but totally uh, doable, yeah. Yeah. right? Yep, you got it, girl. I agree a thousand percent. So when it comes to... Um, Facial contouring, what do you suggest? What are, what are um, some of the patients that now, you know, it's a big thing now mm -hmm. these days. You know, I think at one point was having a beautiful, sexy lips was the thing. But now a yeah. lot of a lot of youngsters, they are looking for that chiseled jawline when it comes to chin and yes. jawline. So yes. how do you, how, what are the option when it comes to that? So, so first off, um, I'll profess this again by saying that you really want to make sure with your injector that they truly understand how to map your anatomy and understand really... Um, what a good balance is for your face. We're not all made to be caricatures. We're not all made to be facetune looking in real Absolutely. life. So, so make sure that you really understand proportions and there are certain planes and, and uh, anatomical features that we use to figure out what we should or should not be doing to make you have that beautiful jawline. In a lot of cases, patients come to me curious because they've seen it on social media and they're not even a great candidate. They don't need it. And so when we choose to use certain tools, we're using tools that are probably more um, biostimulatory or just hyaluronic acids to fill, or in some cases, we had this discussion earlier, reshaping the face, perhaps that's too a little too masculine or a little too broad with atrophying these muscles, shrinking them down with a little Botox um, to help slenderize certain areas. So Botox and fillers are gonna be your two go-tos, really, and a Definitely. little Kybella for debulking if necessary. So those are our three main injectables. I'm, I'm getting suspicious. She keep going back to Kybella. <laughs> I, um, this is, this is, I think this is a sponsor by it's a, Kumba, it's a kick out Kybella Company. Kybella Company. I'm kidding. <laughs> Thanks, Alan. No, I'm kidding. So um, someone is asking, how do you know that someone is the right candidate for the um, jawline and uh -huh. chin? And then the other one, what are the difference between Juvederm and Kiss? Oh, that's a great idea. Juvederm that's and Kiss. Great. Kiss is yeah. Kiss. Really? Kiss is Kiss. Kiss is more, a little bit more lips. Um, you're dealing with a similar particle size. You're dealing with a very soft, natural, um, flexible type product that's going to give you a little, a little bit of a bump in volume, but it's going to integrate nicely. Juvederm's hard because when you speak about Juvederm itself, it's a, it's a family of fillers. And they've got a they're multitude. like brother, sister, little yes. little newborn. Yes, exactly. I, I always call them my juvenile family. It's a family. The grandpa, it's a, it's the a grandma. Family of filler versatility. Yeah. And there's a couple of products, some on label, some off label, that really provide different features, such as lifting and elevation. So you can't really say, and it depends on the lip. Wouldn't you yeah, agree? Yeah, very true. Mm -hmm. You cannot really say which product's better than the other because it's very patient dependent and it's product dependent based on what we call its rheology, the way it's made. Um, I, I've i used both products, I love both products, um, product line I should say for Juvederm. Um, we also had a question about Lip Flip, which I think is a huge thing on Instagram. So tell us more, yeah. Lip, I oh goodness gracious you guys, so, so not to get technical, right, as an educator, but the reality is when you're dealing with the Lip Flip, you're dealing with the muscle around the mouth. Around the mouth. And to simplify things, the depth of which you inject a Botox or a neuromodulator like Botox to relax muscles impact how the lip will invert or relax. And so Lip Flip is taking Botox, not filler, not filler yeah. and doing very superficial injections, a low dosage, if you will, around the mouth area to create a really pretty upturn. So um, it's not filler though, you guys. Sometimes you might do Lip Flip and then say, you know what? I, I mean, love I, the way yeah. that looked, but... Let me get some I know a little filler. A little yeah. Zhuzh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Which is bueno. <laughs> that, that's the one that we go for bueno, definitely, absolutely. Um, is there any particular um, filler that you don't use for your um, lip patients?
seen it. astonished at how many options we have nowadays compared to what we used to have, right? Do you Our personal is like full. You have a favorite one they're asking. For the actual, yeah. for lifting? Yeah. I am a huge, huge Voluma user when it comes to elevating the cheek margins. And I know there's been debate on elevation, but I, I will tell you right no. now, it's, yes. the, 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 it's the Mac Daddy of lifting um, as far as elevation goes. And Cheeks are so important, just so you guys That's know. That's just the you know foundation of yes. your beautiful face. It's so, what you guys are creating with your, you know, with your bronzing powders out there, isn't right? That so yeah. you're using your bronzing powders. Well, we're using filler to create that actual curvature of the cheek naturally. Um, I should say naturally, it is filler, but to create your natural look with fillers. There was a question that do you use any hyaluronic acid or do mm -hmm. you use any filler for correcting the acne scars? You can. So you can. Um, my my is that, typical is that approach, where you, like, perhaps... Yeah, approach? I mean, it's kind of my last go-to, right? So I usually will remodel the tissue first with the laser, like the perfractional laser, and to soften and to fill it within and make it more like their native skin. And then I will sometimes use a very superficial filler like Bobella or um, RHA2 or something very soft to go in and pop out that scar tissue. It doesn't usually last as long as I would love, so that's the only kick. That's but, the only kick, But it sure. does work good on a lot of scars and some scars you guys just have to be excised by a surgeon sometimes you don't want to chase it too much or you could you know spend a lot of money getting nowhere um would you recommend any like do you choose uh, prp or um mm -hmm. filler over acne scar treatment oh goodness i think they're both like i they're, mean prp is the growth factor exactly mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. also like any hyaluronic acid filler um, would yeah. help to stimulate the collagen. Mm -hmm. Myself, I did suffer from having um, cystic acne. Um, you know, I was on tetracycline, Accutane, and then when I got the acne under control, mm -hmm. you know, I had to deal with um, acne scars, and especially when it comes to um, having a thicker skin and mm -hmm. having acne for such a mm -hmm. long time. You know, all of this, you know, you can you can achieve a more smoother skin, but it does take time. You know, again, none of this happened overnight. It's not going to go away overnight. But it's definitely a possibility that you can have a beautiful, youthful skin. Um, and I'm sitting right beside her so I can attest to her beautiful, glowing skin. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny. It's, it's tough, though, when you have those patients that have had a history of acne. It's almost like they're, they always feel like they've got acne. Like it's no, a hard they, thing to yeah, get over. They can. It's kind of traumatic. So we're, we love when we can help patients achieve that beautiful skin. So some of the patients we're asking about, is there any treatment for mm -hmm. the neck? Do you do any Botox for the neck and how mm -hmm. does that work? Mm -hmm. That's a great question. So there are, there are some things that I personally am not offering and there are things that I offer regularly on a daily basis. I think that you're going to see on Instagram, you're going to see on social media, a lot of those biostimulatory type products being basically um, blended down with extra bacterial static saline in order to create, or lidocaine to create a nice diffusion and stimulation. That's personally not something that I do a lot of. I tend to do a lot of the laser treatments to simulate collagen. That's, that's the to-go, yeah, yep, for And sure. I do a lot of, you know, Botox and the platysmal bands, those bad boys that are creating that obtuse angle. I like to Botox these guys a lot too to get them to retract back and create a nice sharp angle on the jawline. How about you? No, definitely. When it comes to the neck, I think that's... Um, have you noticed patients or like even myself, I caught mm -hmm. myself that I, you know, would put all the products on my face and I would stop after. right yeah. here. <laughs> I mean, I, I, for the longest time, I even knew I had a neck. So, yes. So now I'm paying. I'm going to shove it here too. Sure, as I'm turning 21, I have decided to pay more attention to my neck. So one of my do favorite treatment again, yes. like, you know, stimulate the collagen. Your prevention is the key. Mm -hmm. You do want to preserve the collagen. So one thing that I do offer in my practice, it's either Morpheus Aid, which is a combination of microneedling, radiofrequency, 
We do yes. a lot of PRP, microneedling. So you do have a lot of options. I tell my patient the goal is to go from A to B, from no collagen to more collagen. Got it, you know, it. you do want to preserve your collagen. So how, there's so many different days, you know, ways. Patients, you know, that they can go get, you know, um, mm -hmm. like does laser, yeah. laser treatments, yep, yep. yeah, um, microneedling, you know, radio frequency, you know, I know a lot of practices that they do offer smooth threads. And, oh, yeah, you, know, yep, you didn't mention that. That's exactly. True. So yes. I feel like at the end of the day, when you do cause trauma to the skin, you know, your skin is forced mm -hmm. to go through recovery phase, therefore more collagen. So we're just going to try to help you guys to go against aging. Mm -hmm. You know, we're not stopping yeah. the aging process. Yes. Um, but do treat your neck and chest the way you treat your face, you guys. That's so important, especially early on. You know, this is this yeah. is the Kybella's um, uh, event. <laughs> so again, we're back to Kybella. I don't know how. So can you do it. Kybella for neck? You you can. Um, there's not a lot of subcutaneous fat in the neck down here per se, but in the like submandibular, like right around the jawline. Sometimes we can debulk those planes a little bit too with yeah. Kybella. No, mm -hmm. I, I agree hundred yeah. percent. So now we're going to go over the our giveaway. Um, so yeah. like just, just a reminder, how are we going to go over our giveaway? Um, I know last time was different. This time uh, you guys can help us out. So we have about five more minutes. So you guys can ask us any question that you would like. Is there anything that you would like to share with our with our oh, followers. That's a great question. I didn't prepare I didn't prepare for like a grand finale question. <laughs> let me think, let me think. Um, hmm. I think one thing that also beside the um, beside the Kybella that we cover <laughs> yeah. is back to this uh, eye. So do you yes. so we you, yes. you don't go straight to the eye. You do no. correct the cheeks. No. How about taking care of the texture of the eyes? Like the texture of the eyes is very important, you guys. And obviously, we know that how you feed your skin daily with a good therapeutic antioxidant around the eye areas is quintessential to success. But basically, as far as we go, right, as, as far as injectors go, um, or even providing PRP or laser services, there are ways to rejuvenate that tissue prior to getting surgery that sometimes, but you have to remember the anatomy under the eye is incredibly, incredibly cumbersome. It's got a lot of detail. So we have to make sure that we're not impacting any of the anatomical you know, references like lymphatic drainage and the fat pad under the eye first. So I would basically say good skincare, good skincare. maybe a little PRP, laser action, and a little bit of fill to camouflage, but nothing crazy because a lot of eye surgeons won't even touch patients that no. have been overfilled under the eye. So it depends on what stage you are in life. And trust your injector. If they tell you you're not a good candidate for filler under your eyes, you guys, That's really the trust fact. them. They're being honest. Yeah. True. They're asking, do you recommend anything for dark circles? Get some sleep. Um, <laughs> anything else? I'm just kidding. I know, right? <laughs> Allergies, get some sleep. There's so much going on for dark when circles. When it comes to dark circles. It, it really is a tough, it's a, it's a tough thing to combat, but I'm not kidding. Diet, sleep, you know. Allergies, those are your biggest components. Secondarily is probably going to be the aging they, process. Yeah. Do you recommend any particular um, product for under the eye? Oh, that's a good one. You know, Skin Medica Kybella. actually. Kybella. No, we're kidding. Don't Kybella under your eyes. Um, Skin Medica actually just came out with a really nice one called Instant Bright, okay. which um, I like their little pads. On my Instagram page, I actually just did a crazy picture of me having the pads under my eyes, which right? really made me feel better and more rested after a long, stressful day. Um, and then they also have a very good eye cream. IS Clinical also has a really good cream. Skin Better makes an amazing cream. I think what's important though, guys, remember to use a therapeutic. Thank you. Yeah, that's Therapeutic, not over the counter. No. That's that, important. So that's a huge difference. Yes. Like I always um, try to explain as easy as possible that I always tell my patient, it's like, you going to CVS buying Tylenol or you going to your primary care physician getting Tylenol 3. Getting it's just the ingredients. Mm -hmm. It's a little stronger and higher. So yeah. definitely go with the pharmaceutical products that, you know, that has a higher um, ingredients. As far as um, SPF, what is your recommendation yeah. and what are your thought process when it comes to sun exposure? So I mean, summer is coming. Question. The weather yes. is getting better. Yeah. And um, shall we... Stay yes. away from sun or... Yeah, <laughs> not me. I'm going to my lake house and I'm going to enjoy it. But here is here is kind of what we've learned, right? We've learned in the last couple of years is to really consider also the UV rays, but also the infrared heat. So the infrared heat, a lot of our newer sunscreens in the market that are therapeutic, the over-the-counter ones are not, are not carrying them, um, are going to have infrared heat protection in addition to UVA and UVB protection. SPF 30 or higher, obviously a really good choice, and a mineral-based sunscreen is going to be healthier for your skin. 
So I would say if you've got melasma, if you've got redness, rosacea, inflammation, that UV heat from the sun is it's also exasperating it. For sure. Yeah, they're aggravating it. So make sure you're choosing a super screen with infrared heat protection, not just a regular sunscreen if you have the option. Um, mm -hmm. About melasma, someone's asking if this is hormone related or uh -huh. what are your thought process on melasma and what's the best way to manage melasma? It's melasma a tricky, yeah. is a monster. It's a monster. Yeah, <laughs> MM monster. No, it that is, is true. It's, it's, it is. It's all about mm -hmm. management. I, you know, I feel like you know you cannot get rid of it hundred percent, but there right. are products that you can use right. to manage your melasma to help suppress it. And I'll be honest, not every product works the same for every individual. So I would love to tell you there's a unicorn out there of a product that we're not telling you about that you need to know about. It's sometimes it's trial and error with melasma. Sometimes it is getting your hormones under control. Sometimes it's checking out your hormone to see if you need bioidentical hormones for replacement to average things back out. There's there's a whole gamut that we could go into in its own discussion on melasma based on hormones. The reality is, trust it's your provider, yeah. try various things, don't give up because what works for one person may not work for the other. The key is not yeah. giving up on melasma. Yes, don't and, give up. And don't remember give up that it's a monster. <laughs> so okay, should we go Let's over our that. giveaway? All right, so um, we're going to first start with uh, Sarah's followers okay um, so I need someone to go ahead and help us with that so go ahead and <laughs> pick what number or the names and then we go from there okay top three actually top four would be bourbon.and dot dot okay. let's pick a number from one to ten got it okay we're gonna pick a number from one to ten so that it's fair so I pick number three Mm -hmm. Oh, they're asking, where is your office, Sarah? So I'm in Leesburg, Virginia. All oh, right. Leesburg, yeah. historical Leesburg, yeah. All right, number three is... The okay. winner is bourbon.and.bowie. Bourbon.and.bowie. You are the winner. winner. So are we doing, I think, are we doing lips or are we doing chin? Is Lip, it lips? Lips. Lips, so lip filler. So how do they contact us? Let's make sure we let these guys know. They're gonna, they're excited. So they can go ahead and call our office to okay. schedule a lip appointment. Awesome. So, so lip they can go to her page. Yeah. yeah. Either. Yep. Whatever works for you, girl. That's fine with me. Yeah. And do you want to do? Um, let's see. So my, do they want to call our office? Would that be easier than if you want to do it that way? And then you guys are gonna do it for your winner. Okay. Awesome. And so, and I, you know what I can do is I'll give the option. If that's okay with you. No, for sure. I'll give the option of either um, lip filler or 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 jawline or chin. So that way, depending on the patient, you know, we can cater to whichever your needs are. So a syringe of filler is coming your way. Oh, that is so, exciting. And our let's see, our office number. We should probably give that real quick. Is seven zero three. 777-2220, Refined Aesthetics, or just message me and we'll, we'll make sure you get taken care of. All right, cool. sounds great. Okay, so. Right, roll. Number from 11 to 21. 11 to 21. <laughs> Since Sarah just turned 21, we'll go 21. So let's pick them. You. Yeah, number 21. All right, the winner is going to be Olive's. One person. Olive Scissor Hand. Olive scissor hands. Oh my it. god. All right, this is exciting. So please feel free to call the office. We would love to see you whenever you're ready. You can book your appointment and get those lips done. Yeah. And again, if you're not a candidate, you do not want to get your lips done, you know, we can offer you something else. So now we're going to go and choose the second person mm -hmm. on Sarah's um, follower. So, all right, so which number does she need so to pick? This time we're going to do, do 1 to 25. 1 to 25. Let's go with lucky number 13. Oh, <laughs> are you sure? Yes, that's my favorite number. <laughs> now we know. All right. The winner is heather.m.morgan. Heather Morgan. You know her? Yes, so oh. we've got to do, so same thing. So lip -a or jawline chin, we've got a syringe of filler coming to you, girlfriend. So this give us a call or just message me, whatever works best. All right. So. Ten to thirty. Let's go um, twenty-five. All right. The last winner of today's giveaway is Kimberly underscore Ann. All right, nice. Kimberly. So again, <laughs> whenever you're ready, we do have your syringe of filler ready for you in a golden tray. So just give us a call. We'll book your appointment, and we're so excited. 
So um, we do appreciate everyone. Before I finish, we do have a small gift for oh our gosh. lovely guest. Thank oh you gosh. so much. This is this is for you, you Sarah. So cute. No, we oh do we do appreciate now. You are so did I did I approve I'm 100% oh my Iranian? Gosh. You are All right, we yes. shall. I mean, I have a, a why well, love Kybella for Sarah. <laughs> Is it Kybella? <laughs> of course. Like, it's it's going to have to be a lot of Kybella with Kybella. <laughs> this is no, so we do appreciate you. Um, you know, this means a lot to me. Thank you it's so much. Flower Bomb? How do you... Oh, I sorry. love Flower Bomb. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of my favorite fragrances. Oh, my gosh. Oh my gosh. I love you. This. Thank you, love. Oh, my You're God. So okay. I knew it before I even got it. That is so funny. <laughs> All right, everyone. Well, it was a pleasure. Um, thank you so much, thank Sarah, you. for your time. Thank you, everyone, for joining us for our IG Live. Yes. Stay tuned, and please feel free to reach out to lovely Sarah for any further question. You can also, guys, you know, for the ones who win, call her, yes. book her appointment. Yes. This is so exciting. So, um, all right, guys. Thank you, Nurse right. Oh, my we God, love my you, pleasure. Oh, <laughs> oh, thank, thank you, sweetheart. You. Appreciate oh, it. I love you. Yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> all right, thank you.